Can you guys hear me? Just making sure that we're live. That's all. Okay, now I see it. Hi, everybody. Um, let me do a sound check really quick. Can everybody hear me? I am Rhonda from A Stitch in Time Embroidery Designs, and I will be taking over the All Brand Show today. Barbara is here with us in the background, so you might see her pop up in the chat there, but I'm going to be doing the show today. And I see Ann has already typed in that hashtag All Brands. You guys can type that up because there will be a drawing for a gift card at the end of this show today. All right, so let me do a quick sound check. Type up and let me know if you can hear me and maybe pop, uh, let me know where you're joining me from too. Hi, Lori. How are you? All right, now everybody's popping in there. Hey, Star and Maureen. I see some names that I recognize. Hey, Barbara Jones. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. <laughs> all right. It is great to see you guys. Remember, type in hashtag all brands and Barbara is going to pull a name at the end. Hi, Dawn. Good to see you too. All right. Let me show you guys what we're going to be stitching today. Now that everybody's coming in here, we're going to stitch out one of these coasters. We'll do the Christmas tree from my new In The Hoop Christmas coaster set. Just in time to do some last minute stitching. And this coaster has finished edges. So when it comes out of the hoop, you're going to get rid of the excess stabilizer and um, let it dry and it will be all finished. I'm in a gift making mood this week. I have to be, we only have a few weeks left until Christmas and I haven't really started anything yet. So. After we get one of these little coasters stitched up, we're going to talk about gift making. So you see, I stuck some things in the background there that we can talk about um, making some last minute gifts. If you're like me and in a panic because you don't have everything done yet. <laughs> so that's what we'll do then. Hi, Maureen. Yeah, I like the size of these two. These are actually done in a five by seven or six by six hoop because I love to collect mugs. I Everywhere I go, I'm looking for unique coffee mugs. So I have this big collection of coffee mugs and some of them are quite large. I have like a Santa and a snowman and I just love to make mug rugs. And now I'm doing these round coasters because I, I kind of like the round ones better too. Hi, Sharon. Sharon's in North Texas. How are you guys with the weather today? It's December. We're in Louisiana. Barbara and I are in Louisiana and it's still kind of warm here was in the 60s today. So, all right. So for those of you who don't know me or don't know anything about me, let me tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I purchased my first embroidery machine 26 years ago. I had to do the math the other day when I was on with Angela Wobe to figure out just how long I've been doing this. I wanted to quit my full-time job. And I was an office manager for a nationwide company and I wanted to be home with my kids. So um, I bought a machine. I grew up sewing and crafting with my mom and my aunts. They all sewed. They all did crafts. So uh, it seemed like a good idea. It seemed like it would be a good transition for me from office manager to go into that kind of stuff. So I bought a machine. I brought it home. And mom and I uh, set out to learn machine embroidery a few months later. I officially opened a Stitch in Time Embroidery Designs in my home. I had already picked up several local businesses as customers. I went after businesses as customers because I was trying to replace an income as an office manager. Uh, so from the get-go, machine embroidery was going to be a business for me. And it wasn't that much fun, but it is now. <laughs> so anyway, back in the late 1990s when I did this, Internet was not that popular yet. If it was, I didn't have it. So um, if I had any issues, uh, help was a phone call away, but there were no videos or online demos like this that you could look at and get help. You guys are really lucky now that All Brands and Barbara and Courtney are doing all these demos and videos to help you guys because um, it's so much better now. And I'm telling you this because 
Uh, even though I've been doing this for 26 years, I don't really see myself as an expert. I see myself as someone that um, has learned through making a whole lot of mistakes. <laughs> there are so many variations of things that we do in embroidery that, um, you know, a lot of things can happen. You guys know that, right? Yes, Anne, I see that. My son does digitize, yeah. So, um, Mom and I managed to figure out a lot of things on our own. And thankfully, the company that I purchased my very first machine from did provide lessons, just like all brand does. And they also gave me this huge binder with lots of tips and tricks in it and uh, where to buy supplies because I was looking for wholesale, things like that. So um, that was a big help, too. My dad helped me with large deliveries. My kids pitched in from time to time. So it's really been a family business. And over the years, we've actually embroidered thousands of shirts and caps and tote bags. Um, I even embroidered a tent once. I was really adventurous when I was younger <laughs> in this and pretty brave back then to try something like that. But it worked out, you know. So about seven years ago, I started getting tired of the big heavy boxes and, you know, hundreds of shirts in here all the time. And a good friend that I met online and have been friends with probably about eight years now, I think, uh, talked me into learning how to digitize instead. And she said, you know, uh, that she's also a digitizer. And um, so I got digitizing uh, software and started taking lessons for that and started a stitch in time embroidery designs.com, a stitch in time designs.com. Look at that. I don't even know my own website address. Anyway, um, my son and I are both digitizers now, so it's still a family business. Uh, you might have seen some of his work, those giant dragonflies above my head or some of his work. They are freestanding lace and mylar. And that big one, you can stitch out in an 8 by 12 hoop or a 9.5 by 14 inch hoop. It's just more hoopings, but the uh, dragonfly does come out the same size. And that little one right above it, you can stitch out in a five by seven hoop. Not really sure of the finished size of that one off the top of my head, but it takes three hoopings to stitch it out. And uh, it's really easy. It might look a little intimidating, but they're actually pretty easy to stitch out. Um, Jonathan and I, attend. we still attend a lot of classes. We like learning. And this um, hobby or business, whichever one you do it as, is a constantly evolving business and hobby. So there's always something new to learn. There's always some te new technique to try. And that's what makes it exciting and fun. And that's why we love it, right? I mean, aren't you guys always trying something new? It's never boring, never boring. All right. And the other thing that some of you may know us by and not really know who we are is um, Jonathan's Freestanding Lace Tarantula that he did last year has consistently been our top seller since, believe it or not. And for Christmas last year, someone told us um, a story about a Christmas spider. And I'm going to share that story with you if we have time later, because it's really cute. And we have one on our little Christmas tree back there, but you can't see it. We stitched it out in Christmas colors. <laughs> And put it on the tree because of that story. So um, that's a lot of fun. Christy, I'm not actually sure if it's case sensitive or not. I don't know. Maybe um, Barbara or Lauren could type up that answer and let us know. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for coming to hang out in here with us. All right. So I, I am grateful that things have changed over the years and that we have all this information at our fingertips online. And I want to give a Shout out to all brands and Barbara and Courtney for doing these things, uh, these demos and these instructional videos, because it truly, truly helps everybody. It makes it much easier to learn and not make so many mistakes. Hi, Reen. Um, Reen, if you guys didn't know, is the friend who talked me into learning how to digitize. So I'm forever grateful for her. It's kind of changed our business and made it a whole lot more fun. All right. so. Uh, the coaster that I picked to stitch out today live is going to be this little Christmas tree. And this set also comes with um, SVG files. So if you have a scan and cut 
uh, which side is that on? <laughs> My scanning cut or one of the other cutters that can read SVG files, then you can pre-cut the applique pieces, the little pup, uh, the little reindeer, or the little house. You can pre-cut the pieces for them, which makes it really easy to do because you don't have to take the hoop on and off of the machine to do applique. But if you don't have um, a cutting machine like that, I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to do without one too. This little coaster, I think the machine says 19 minutes at 600 stitches per minute. So um, it really doesn't take that long to do. So let me switch cameras to my cutting table and I will show you guys um, uh, my mat, my skin and cut mat that I have already pre-cut some of these pieces on and show you how nice that works. I didn't cut it on live because I wasn't sure if we'd had time or not, but all we had to cut out was the three pieces for the Christmas tree. So this is the bottom and the middle and the top. They're all cut out. I used a product um, called Madeira Applique Magic. And I saw that Lauren was kind enough to put links on the Auburn site to all of the products that I use. They do sell this. What it is, is a fusible product. It's fusible on one side and the other side is paper that peels away. So once you prepare your fabric, you just cut out the little pieces in the size that you need and you cut out a piece of the Madeira Applique Magic and fuse it. I cut this one a little bit too big, but that's okay. So you just iron that to it like that. And then you end up with a piece like this that you can just put down on your cutting mat. And of course, if you guys have the scan and cut, you know how easy that is to import these um, design files and just drag them right over the area that you want to cut and cut it out like that. And when it's all cut out, and you're ready to place it. I know the back side is paper. So you guys see that right there? When you're ready to, to use it, this side is sticky. So after we stitch that placement line that this bottom of the tree goes in, we'll just be able to stick it right in place. We don't have to use messy spray or anything like that. And that's what makes it so great of a product to use when you're doing applique. All right, so, and of course, if you don't have a cutting machine, you're just gonna use, you know, small pieces like this. And I'm gonna show you as we go how easy that is to do too. It's really not a problem at all. All right, the other thing I wanted to show you before we get started stitching is, um, this is the scissors that I use when I do applique in the hoop. You see how curved they are? They are Kai, K-A-I, double curve scissors. Uh, they also put this on the website for you guys to look at. It's five inch high scissors. I like the ones with the blunt tip because they don't get stuck in the fabric as I am trimming along in the hoop like that. Uh, I have the sharp ones and they kind of get stuck a little bit, but the blunt tip does not. And they're so small that they're really easy to use in the hoop when you are um, embroidering like that. And the other thing I wanted to show y'all is what I do now. This is a six by six hoop, so it's square. And um, let me stop and answer a couple questions. Uh, Joan, sometimes like if you have a brand new mat, I had to scrape it off of a brand new mat, but um, this mat's been used a little bit, so I'm not sure. I probably should have used the low-tech mat and I used the standard mat instead. But um, I think I could probably get it off pretty easy. Yeah, see? I mean, it might leave a little bit there. Or you could cut it the opposite way. You could cut it with the fabric side down. Just make sure that you reverse the image on your scan and cut if you're going to do that. Just mirror the image so that... Um, you're doing it the right, you know, so it comes out the right way. Anyway, it looks like it's exactly the same front and back, but it's actually just a tiny bit different. Also, one thing I wanted to show you before we go any further too, 
is that um, if you've never purchased our designs before, they all come with a PDF instruction sheet like this. You can print out or just pull up on your tablet or your computer and follow along. But it's got a supply list so you know what sizes all the pieces of fabric that you need. And we have step-by-step -step directions with photos. So you'll be able to follow along. We actually take photos of each and every step. Easy to follow. And then we have all our contact information at the back. So that's what our instructions look like that come with all of our designs. So, And of course, we have our Facebook group, too, where you can contact us easily for help. And we want to see what you're making anyway. So this design does fit in a 5 by 7 or a 6 by 6 hoop. I like this 6 by 6 hoop. And the other tip I want to give you before we start stitching it is that whenever I'm stitching uh, freestanding lace or anything on these thinner um stabilizers here this is two layers of the mesh type water soluble stabilizer i'm actually using the same stabilizer that i would if i was doing freestanding lace because this coaster has um an embroidered edge it's got satin stitching all along the edge like that and when we're finished we're going to cut it out we're going to get rid of this stabilizer and it's all done but to help keep that stabilizer nice and tight in the hoop we're going to use t-pins in the hoop like that in the edges so can y'all see that how i'll put that little t-pin in there like that i don't really have to do it in the six by six hoop because it doesn't have um you know it's more even all the way around but the rectangle hoops if anything is going to get loose in that hoop it's going to be on these long edges they are the weakest points of the hoop so the T-pins will help the stabilizer from not slipping in like that. So let me see if I can do that real quick. I don't really have to do it in this one, like I said, but uh, let me get the bigger ones. I like the two-inch T-pins for this. They work great. And it does take a little bit of a trick, you know, to hold it with your fingernail like that at the bottom. But you're going to slide it in there. And it's going to come out there like that. It's not going to scratch up the bed of your machine or anything because it's actually on top of the hoop. So I usually do put a couple in as close to the edge of the hoop as I can like that. And it stops it from sliding. This one really doesn't need any on that side. All righty. So how about, oh, thanks, Elizabeth. I learned that a few years ago from another digitizer and I've been doing it ever since. Um, even when I'm even when I hoop cut away to do like an in the hoop uh, project, I still use T-pins now. I've kind of made it, um, you know, just a habit to do. All right. So, oh, and before I forget, I almost forgot to tell you guys, I created a special discount code for all of you All Brands fans. If you go to our website at astitchintimedesigns.com, and you type in All Brands 20, you'll get 20% off any designs that are not already marked down. And that's going to expire December 31st. So it's kind of our way to help you guys with um, your Christmas stitching. So if you have anything that you still need to do at the last minute, like me, <laughs> then you can do that. Okay, we're going to move over to the machine. Yeah, you should try that, Christy. It it works great. It really is a good tip. I'm glad I learned that. And uh, it's helped me a lot to keep things. I came from a commercial background where um, I was stitching logos all the time. But now I like to stitch all this fun stuff. Okay, so we're going to go with step one that stitches straight onto this water-soluble stabilizer. It is just going to stitch a placement line for our batting and our fabric. And I am using a Luminaire XP3 machine to stitch this out on, which I just purchased from All Brands a few months ago. And I still don't know everything that this machine can do. I know that it was very easy to bring in, plug in, and start using. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. 
We love all brands. Okay, so that is the placement line. And you're just going to center a piece of batting over it. Another thing I did with these coasters is I designed them so that I could cut most everything out, all the backs and fronts, with a six by six quilting ruler. <laughs> so all these pieces are six by six. And then you just put your fabric for the top of the coaster. You put it right side up. And we're going to stitch step two. And that's just going to stitch another circle to hold everything down. And you can tape that if you want, but I usually um, iron and starch all of my fabric pieces before I get started on any in the hoop projects. That's something Rain told me to do years ago and I've been doing it ever since. It works great. All right, and then step three is gonna stitch a little bit of quilting around the edges where the Christmas tree is not. So, I'm going to stitch that in red thread also. All right, I'm looking through some of these comments here. Debbie says she learned so much from YouTube and the internet. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I remember those days that the info was only at the library, Debbie. <laughs> Uh, we do try, Maureen, to, to include all the SVG files um, for our applique, anything that has applique on it. Hi, Sheila Ryan. Glad to see you here. Yes, Rain says starching and pressing is so important. It is. It makes everything out, makes everything come out so nice. Joan purchased a Lumi XP3 about two months ago. I'm still learning a lot about it too, Joan. I'm trying to work my way through all those Angela Wolf classes on the Lumi XP3. And uh, it is amazing what this machine can do. We still have a, a dream machine also. We have a dream machine too, which we've enjoyed for years now. And uh, and the Luminaire, I'm sure, is, is just fabulous too. My coupon code is allbrands20. All right, so the next step that's gonna stitch out is the trunk of the tree because it needs to go underneath everything. And we're just gonna switch the thread here and move on with that. Oops. If I hit the camera a little bit, let me see if I can back it up some. I think I have it too close. For me to rethread everything. Let me see. Hope I don't make y'all dizzy. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. I just have to be able to get my hands in there to um to do that. Okay, so that's gonna stitch out the tree trunk. Yeah, I think Dawn has a luminaire too, right? Looking for a new machine upgrade. Yep, it is a great machine, I have to say. It's got so many really cool bells and whistles on there. We are really enjoying it. And I love the way it has that projector on it where you can actually project the, um, the image of the design right onto whatever's in your hoop. So you can see exactly where it's going to be. You know, I've come from a long time ago where none of that. I mean, my commercial machine doesn't even have automatic threaders. <laughs> so um, I didn't even wear glasses before I started this business. I had 2020 vision. So um, that definitely is not the case anymore. <laughs> All right. So who else in here is like me and trying to stitch things up for Christmas in a panic yet? This time of the year has always been really, really busy for us in this kind of business. And uh, this is the time of the year where I am trying to find quick and easy things that look great to stitch up for uh, Christmas. Marsha, you're, you're in my same boat as me. Yeah, Christy too. I know. Oh, let me show you guys something. Well, that's stitching. 
I stitched up a few of these little coasters in the last week or so. And we have a decision to make as to what color border we're going to put on it. Do you guys like the red border with the green decorative stitching? Or do you guys like the green border with the red decorative stitching? What do you think? Which border should we use there? Can I have some votes? Green or red? Which one do y'all like? Green or red? For Halloween, we've done some um, coasters like this. And some of them, we have... Um, the opposite color for the edge, and some we have like a matching color for the edge. Green, red, let me see. I think I'm seeing more greens than red so far. Green satin border for contrast, yeah. I kind of like that too, so we might go with that one. Okay, so now we gotta get ready to put our little applique pieces on. So let me change this again. And we're going to start with the bottom. That stitch is on first. And I'm just going ahead and change to my green thread right now. I could do this faster if I wasn't doing it in front of a camera. <laughs> okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to stitch a placement line for that little piece of fabric that I cut out for the bottom of the tree. All right, so you guys can see that line there. And if you don't have pre-cut fabric, then you would just place um, a piece of fabric down there. I have the sizes all listed in the instructions. And the next step would stitch out a tack down line and then you would remove the hoop far enough off the machine where you could trim the excess fabric from around. But since we have the scan and cut and SVG files and we have this little piece already cut, let me show you how easy that is. It fits right inside of that placement line and the back of this stuff it's sticky, so it sticks right down in place. You don't have to take it on and off the machine, and you're pretty much done with that. I'm going to go ahead and stitch out the next step anyway, which would be the tack down. You'll see it stitches right along the inside edge of that piece of fabric, but we're not going to have to stop and trim it. So it's going to be nice and quick and easy there. I think my camera doesn't like all that movement, huh? <laughs> All right, so I don't have to stop and trim, so we can just go ahead to the next step, which is gonna be a satin stitch all around the edges of that bottom layer. Oh yeah, Rain, I have, you know how I am with that. I have that Brother Label Maker. That is one of the, my most favorite things in this room, in my sewing room, because I label everything. Christy, um, it is called Madeira Applique Magic. Um, they were kind enough, All Brands was kind enough to put a link to that in, um, in all the information for this video. Well, it's on their website. They have an information page with all of the stuff that I'm using here. So, yeah, shop product in the description. And it's, it's listed there, so you can go right to it. But I use it for all my applique. It works great. It doesn't gum up the needle. I don't have to use that spray stuff. And Reen, you need a six by six hoop. You know, I'll probably use that one more than any other hoop. I just love it. I love that hoop. And one thing I know you probably um, can't see. Oh, Dawn, you're a label maker person like me too. I have everything labeled. All of the Tupperware in my kitchen is labeled. <laughs> Every bin and box in my sewing room is labeled. I got my money's worth from that brother label maker. <laughs> I love that thing. But um, we have put um, Edge Run. I know you guys are not, a lot of you guys are probably not digitizers. There's a few of you in here or that I recognize. 
but you'll notice that on the satin stitch, it has an edge run underneath everything, which keeps the edge of the satin as nice and neat as possible. So it makes it, you know, it's not a real jagged edge. I'm gonna keep it nice and neat. All right, so we're ready to stitch the second layer. And we're gonna go ahead and switch to the green thread that we need for that. I'm using three different colors of green. I'm using uh, grunge fabric by Moda because it happens to be my favorite fabric and I probably have a little bit of it in every color possible. But another idea for this little tree is if you did the three layers in Christmas fabric that had a tiny print on it, that would be really cute too. I just did one like that with a class for Angela Wolf. Yeah, um, you should use the low tack mat because that way the um, the paper backing won't stick to it. But I actually don't know where I put my low tack mat, so I'll have to order another one <laughs> from All Brands. Okay, so that stitched the uh, placement stitch for the middle of the tree. And of course, you would do the same thing if you don't. If you didn't have pre-cut fabric, you would put your next piece of fabric there, let it stitch the placement stitch. But we don't have to do that. We're just going to put our little sticky backing right where it belongs. Another thing I wanted to mention is that um, the scanning cut has that rotary blade now. And since I use mine primarily for cutting fabric, I love the rotary blade for the scan and cut. It's just like as you were cutting it with a big rotary blade, but it's a little tiny one and it cuts little tiny pieces and it does a fabulous job. I cut through felt like that. It'll cut through batting. It'll cut everything nice and neat with that little teeny rotary blade. So it's perfect for people like me who use it for different fabrics. Okay, so we don't have to trim it. It's already trimmed. So we can go right to the next step and stitch that edge there. Mm -hmm. And if you watch where the needle's going, it's going to go all around the inside. Then it's going to go all around the right on the outside of that piece of fabric. So it's kind of like making an inside wall and an outside wall for the stitches so that they will line up straight and not have too much of a jagged edge on there. It's also doing um, a zigzag stitch to kind of rein in any little frayed edges that the fabric might have. Yep, I forgot to tell y'all that I was using that rotary blade. I When I talked to all brands earlier today, that's my favorite. I'll just leave it in. The other day, I accidentally cut vinyl with it, and uh, hey, it cuts vinyl okay, too. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, well, welcome, Christy. Welcome to All Brands. Uh, Barbara usually does a live every Thursday at 3.30, and I love to watch them, too. You never know what's going to be happening or what they're going to be doing, but you can't guarantee one. You're always going to learn something. Oh, Robbie, I am a grunge junkie, too. I have three bins full of grunge fabric in different colors. I have a lot of um, little in-the-hoop mini quilts on our website, and I use the grunge fabric for the background on those things. It lends interest to the project um, without overpowering the embroidery design, so it makes a perfect background for those. All right, we're already ready for the top of our tree. And I'm gonna change to a light green fabric, I mean thread. I'm really gonna have to try and stitch this out with some Christmas fabric too and see what that looks like. <coughs> oh, you guys, I know some of you follow me in my Facebook group. <coughs> but the other day, I was um, embroidering some little mini quilts, or maybe it was these. I can't remember what it was. But I was using that invisible mon monofilament thread, and I forgot to take it out 
One second. I just have to grab a sip of my tea. <coughs> and I was trying to stitch, and it still had the monofilament thread in the needle like that. And it just wouldn't stitch out right. It took me forever because I couldn't see it in there to realize I had left it in there. Whenever you have a problem, most of the time it's user error. Okay, so we're going to stitch the placement line for the top of the tree. Christy, these coasters are just in one size. It's a set of four, <coughs> and they fit in a five by seven or a, um, a six by six hoop. They're five inches around. All right, so it's got the placement for the top one. This one, the um, paper came right off the mat with it. So let me show you. We'll just take the paper right off the back of it. And then we'll stick that one right in place. Isn't this great how easy that is? And you don't have to stand there and trim each piece. I discovered this a few years back when we first started doing applique designs, and it was just, I've used it for every applique design since. All right, so we're on step 13 already, and we're going to stitch the edges on that. Let me see. If you guys have any questions, just pop them on up there because I, my machine is right next to my computer and I can watch for um, any questions like that that pop up. Let me see if I have some more starred questions. Oh, Jean is done with her gift making. <laughs> so she gets to just play and have fun and everything she gets to stitch it or for her. Good for you. One of these years, I'm going to um, be able to do that. I keep promising myself that um, one year I'm going to work ahead enough to where I can take the whole month of December off. I think you did buy it, Dolores. Um, we just released this set a few days ago on um, on Sunday. So it's just been a few days, but it was up. The purpose of the T-pins in the hoop, Kathy, are to um, help keep the stabilizer nice and tight. It prevents it from being drawn into the middle of the hoop. Okay, I think Marsha, okay, Marsha was just asking for the, um, the discount code there. All right, so now we're finished with all of our applique pieces, and we're going to stitch this little star at the top. And I wish I could take credit for how cute this little star is, but Jonathan came along through here while I was working on this design. And just sat down in my spot and digitized this little star. <laughs> he has his own special way of digitizing stars, which I really like. So watch how he stitches it. Watch how he designed it to stitch from the center out. So it kind of gives it um, an illusion of glowing like a star would be brightest in the center and you know, go out from there. So I really like the way he does stars. Oh, thanks, Dawn. I like the set too. It's really, really cute. All right. Um, I have not used heat transfer vinyl on the coasters, Reen. We didn't um, digitize it with heat transfer vinyl in mind. Most of the time when we do that, we put some extra looser stitching right on the inside of the satin so that it doesn't cut through the heat transfer vinyl. And we didn't do that with the coasters, uh, but we just recently did that on one of our mini quilt designs. 
where it can be stitched out with heat transfer vinyl or, um, or fabric. And let me see. Uh, the stabilizer, Krista, is um, it is water soluble stabilizer. It's the mesh type water soluble stabilizer. We're going to wash it away from the edges when we're done. Can you guys see how Jonathan did that star from the inside out? So it's like it's just it just reminds me of a starburst that's glowing like that. And Shelda wants to know why I chose to do the quilting first. That's because sometimes it goes underneath some of the edges of the design. So uh, because it goes underneath a little bit in certain spots, we stitch that out first. All right. So now we're going to put the back of um, this on. we got to put the back side on. So we're going to take it off <coughs> and turn it to the back side. Let me see. I might be able to do this here instead of bringing it back to the cutting table. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the other six by six piece of fabric and we're going to center it right side up. Let me see if I can do that here. We're going to center it right side up over the back of the hoop. I'm not going to put it on. I'm just putting it like that just to show you guys because we have to tape it on there. So you're going to kind of uh, stitch it. We're going to stitch it down, but we're going to leave it on the back. So we're going to tape the corners. I am using some 3M medical tape, transport tape. It works great with embroidery. It tears really easily. I'm just doing it right here on the machine so you guys can see. Normally, I would take this off and put it on my cutting table. And I'll tell you another tip right now because I know Auburn's has them. I don't think they have them for the 6 by 6 hoop. But, Reen, can you please do that? I would like an a, um, ironing pad for the 6 by 6 hoop. Pressing, hoop and press pad. Uh, Reen at Embroidery Garden has these hoop and press pads, which when you're working from the backside of a hoop like that, they fit inside of the hoop. And then when you're working on it and you have to press down, it doesn't loosen the stabilizer at all. They're so great to work with. And I have all the sizes, but I don't have a six by six. Okay, so we have the fabric on the back. We're going to put this back on. And I'm going to leave the yellow on here so you guys can see it really good. We'll just leave this yellow thread. But what we're going to do is stitch the front and back together now. Yeah, that tape works great. Hoop and press pads. That's it. Can can you please see if you can do that in a six by six ring? <laughs> That's my most used ones. Yeah, the hoop and press pads are fabulous. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that so much. If I if I had used my five by seven hoop. That's what I would have. I would use, I would put it on my cutting table and turn that hoop upside down um, on a hoop and press pad. And then I could press that tape as hard as I want to um, to tape it down really good. It works great. They work great for in the hoop project. So let's take this off of the hoop. We're not going to unhoop it because we still have to do the edges. But what we're going to do right now is we are going to. Um, use this great little Kai scissors and watch how close I can get to the edge of the stitching without cutting through it with these little scissors. Um, they, they'll get closer than those duckbill scissors, which I never could get the hang of using those. I have some. Honestly, I don't even know where they are anymore because I don't remember the last time I used them. But you want to cut away the batting and the fabric all the way around. It's easy to cut because it's a circle. You can just follow right up against the edge like that. Just You don't want to cut through that last stitch. Let me show you how close... 
those little scissors get. Can you guys see how close they get to the stitching? Isn't that fabulous? It works great. All right, so we're going to turn over to the back side, and this is where that hoop and press pad would come in. I didn't even think of that when I grabbed this 6 by 6 hoop today, Reen. Um, but we want to do the same thing, and I'm just going to hold this up a little bit because I don't want to press down on this stabilizer and have it get loose in the hoop. And we're going to do the same thing. Just trim it all away. These little tiny scissors can get nice and close. And here's a tip for you. Buy more than one pair because once you start using them, if they end up falling in the garbage can or getting lost, you're going to panic without your scissors. So um, <laughs> I usually buy a few pair at a time. I have one by each machine and two on my cutting table right now. I really like this little. These are my most used scissors. So see how close we were able to trim around that edge like that? So now we have our circle on the front and the back. And we're going to take it back to the machine. Yeah, the same thing happens to me, Dolores. Sometimes they just kind of get scooched off into the garbage can. At least I'm guessing that's where they're going. Okay, what did you guys vote? You voted for the green, right? So we are going to change the bobbin to green so that it will match on the back, and the back will be pretty like that. I already wound a bobbin with some green and some red so that we could do either one, and we'll use the green. And we'll go ahead and change that top thread to match the green also. Um, the bobbin I'm using right now uh, Dinah, I'm actually using the 40 weight embroidery thread in the bobbin, but the bobbin thread that I had in earlier was uh, 60. Okay, so now we're going to stitch the, um, the satin edge, and it's going to do the same thing you saw that our satin edge has on, on the rest of the design, too. It stitches that wall. That edge run all the way around the inside edge and the outside edge. It gives your satin stitch a nice, clean, uh, non-jagged edge. It's going to go all around inside and outside. And then it's also going to wrap up the edges with a zigzag. All that's going underneath the satin stitch. So it's going to make a nice, clean, pretty edge. <coughs> Oh, you guys are telling me how you lost all your scissors? <laughs> yeah, I can't use duckbill scissors, Janet. I got them and thought they would be great, but I just can't get the hang of using them. I love In the Hoop projects too, Diane. Let me tell you a quick story is actually I had... Um, like I said in the beginning, I came like from the commercial industry. I got into machine embroidery for a business. So um, didn't have a whole lot of fun. When I got on Facebook, not long after I started using Facebook, I accidentally ran across Embroidery Gardens Group <laughs> and got an Embroidery Gardens Group. And Reens in the Hoop Designs were the first designs that I ever did. I didn't even know in the hoop designs existed because all I was embroidering was company logos and names and things like that. And thank goodness I found Reen first because she has some of the best in the hoop designs out there. And I can't even remember what I embroidered first, what I stitched first, but after that I was kind of hooked on that stuff and it was it was pretty cool. I still have a lot of the things that I stitched out. My mom I uh, spend some time every Sunday with my mother, 
And Rain, I know you probably remember this from years ago. I took your little sunflower pin. Do you remember that? And uh, stitched out some leaves. And I put the names of all my mom's children, all my siblings, in the center of a, a flower, each one. And I put them in a flower pot and made a flower pot with sunflowers with all her six kids' names in it. She still has that. I think it's like eight years ago. I did that with one of Reen's designs. She loves it. Um, you think that's why I have trouble with those, Charlie, is because I'm left-handed? No idea. <laughs> it, it might be. You never know. Sometimes it's good to be left-handed. You know, for me, it's really convenient to be left-handed when I'm digitizing because I use a pen monitor to digitize, which means I have a pen in one hand and I'm actually drawing on the monitor and then I'm clicking uh, enter and other things with the mouse in my right hand. So I can do it with two hands. So it comes in handy being left-handed sometimes in this industry. I'll show you guys um, left-handed. <laughs> Who's left-handed? Are you, Barbara? Are you left-handed? I did some of these coasters for Halloween, too. You're left-handed, too, Dawn? Um, and I did, two with the opposite things like that. Like this one is orange with the black um, outline. And then this is... This is a little mummy, so I did this one with the black satin and the white. So you can see how it looks different when you have the edges that are contrasting edges and then you match the edge. These two match the edge, but I use the decorative stitch as the, um, the other color there. So you can like mix and match and do whatever you want with these edges. This is um, not a coaster. This is an ornament that we did, a nativity ornament, but it's made of the same shape and the same edge. And we did um, a contrasting edge on that one, too. Oh, Christy, you know, Christy said she tried to be left-handed as a kid, but her mom was persistent. They tried to do that to me, too, when I was a kid. I am 61 years old, so when I was in... Um, elementary school, they tried to force me to be right-handed too. I never could write that way. So for all of their pushing, I never could do it. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to stitch is a decorative edge on top of that satin stitch. And I'm going to do that in red. And the bobbin thread can just stay green. It's just fine. You can change it, of course, if you wanted to, but I find it looks, it looks okay green. All right. Oh, Shirley, I have all my scissors in here are left-handed scissors, except for the ones Jonathan uses or not. <laughs> He's right-handed, so he has right-handed scissors. That's good, Barbara Jones. Yeah, my mom never bothered me to switch hands. It was just my teachers in school that uh, tried to make me sweet. Yes, Rain, um, we have a blue and gold macaw in our house. Her name is Miko. She didn't make an appearance the last time I was on All Brands. <laughs> Jonathan is in the kitchen with her watching um, Clint's reptiles on the tablet in there, trying to keep her quiet. <laughs> so Shirley says she was right-handed and then changed to left-handed. Now that's interesting. Are you guys remembering to type up hashtag all brands? We're going to pull uh, a lucky winner at the end to win a $25 gift certificate. 
to all brands. What do y'all guys think about that edge on the coaster? And we are almost done. Let me see if I have any comments that I need to answer. Thanks, Maureen, and Miss Dawn, and Shelda. All right, now we're going to take it off the machine, and we are going to finish this up. I'll show you guys to finish this up. It's really easy to do. Still trying to get used to that different music that the Luminaire plays instead of the... Um, the dream machine <laughs> have a little bit of different music here all right so we're just going to take it out of the hoop and we're just going to trim away let me lower my camera a little so that you guys can see a little better what i'm doing here okay might have it too low, but I'll fix it in a minute. We want to get as close as we can to the edge of this without cutting our pretty satin. We don't want to cut that. And then just get some water. You have two options here. If you want to use this right away, um, then you can do it this way. If you have time and you have time to rinse it out completely, that's even better because if you hit this with a steam iron or something, it's going to just go all like that and crinkle up. But it's because of the water soluble stabilizer inside when you wet it, it kind of gets scummy and everything. So um, if you have time to run this underwater and rinse it out completely, that's great. If you're in a rush to use it, then you can just wet the edges with a Q-tip. I didn't put warm water in here. I just, you know, it's been sitting out for an hour. But if you want to use this quickly, then you can just do this to the edges with a Q-tip and some water where only the edges get wet. And the water-soluble stabilizer is just going to melt away. I usually do it like this because I need it to dry so I can take photographs and get it on my website for sale. But then later on, I take it and soak them in water and then rinse them really good so that all of the water soluble stabilizer um, goes away. So if you do this and you forget that you didn't wash anything out and you hit this with an iron or something, um, and it, and it kind of bunches up. You didn't ruin it. All you have to do is wash it out really good. That's just the stabilizer doing that. And, um, and it will be okay. Hey, Karina. I see Karina joined us all the way from Norway. All right. So that's what it's going to look like when it's all done. You'll have nice, clean edges. Let me grab the one that's green like this one. And show you guys what it looks like finished. It's all finished and nice and pretty on the edges. And you can have nice little coasters. And of course, if you want to iron this down, remember that you have that applique magic under here. And you can, um, you know, iron that down if you want to. It's a coaster, so you're probably not going to throw it in the washing machine or anything. So that's not that important to do. But that's it. Our little coaster is done. What do you guys think? Water paint brushes? Yeah, I, you know, I have some like that, Dawn, because I use those um, Derwent, I think that's the name of them. I use some uh, paint, paint pencils like that to paint on fabric sometimes. All right. So I know it's the end of the hour, but I did put all this stuff out because I wanted to show you guys something. I'm hoping it's okay with everybody from all brands in the background if I go ahead and show you guys. Because this could be another scan and, pro uh, scan and cut project too. I found this 
because, you know, I need something to use with my Christmas posters, right? And my daughter and I love nothing better than watching Hallmark movies uh, with hot cocoa. I found this box on Amazon, this hot cocoa station box. And as soon as I got it in, I thought, wow, I could have just gone to Hobby Lobby or Michael's or, you know, another craft store and purchased a box like this and, you know, personalize the front of it with um, our names or whatever I wanted it to say and probably could have made it really, really pretty and, uh, you know, great for my house. But I just wanted something to go with my posters and all of my mugs that I collect. I found that. I don't know where I found this at. But isn't it cute? But I find a lot of cute mugs. So I thought I would display them somewhere in the kitchen. Some of my Christmas mugs with the hot cocoa thing. And this is a plastic mason jar. I found a set of 10 of them on Amazon. They're really light. Um, for $16.99, you could get 10 of them. So that's less than two bucks a piece. And they are perfect for the little hot chocolate station there. And if you want to mail something out, a plastic mason jar weighs a lot less than um, a glass one. And then you don't have to worry about packing it um, any special way because it's not going to break. So you can put candy in them. This is one of our freestanding lace um, ornaments. Jonathan did this little snowflake. So I stuck it on here as just a tag. You could put it on a package like as a gift tag or something because it's actually an extra little gift that way we have all of these little sketch type designs on our website too that i also used with um the 10 things that i bought here the 10 mason jars that i bought and all you do here is just cut a piece of muslin or thin white cotton i measured the uh length that i needed it and the height and I just quickly ran, you know, hemmed it and hot glued this to the back of the jar. And inside this jar, I have some white sand. I know you probably can't see in there. Some white sand and a battery operated tea light. So I made like little lamps with them. But you could put candy in these things or anything else that was quick and easy to stitch up for gifts. Um, you don't have to give them the entire set. You can just give them one or money. You can fill this with, who doesn't like money? Um, make these cute little mason jars and put some money in there. And I also found a pretty box and some uh, kitchen spoons. And I have a box with towels. These were inexpensive, plain white towels. Uh, that I got somewhere. I can't remember where. I stitched this jumbo riprap on the bottom of them and then I just embroidered them with some pretty baking um, designs like that. So you can give that as a gift too. Doesn't have to be a set of four. You can give out one with some spoons in a pretty box. But I just wanted to give you guys some ideas of um, what you can do with gifts. And if I can take Two more minutes to tell these guys something, to tell everybody something. This is a unique gift that I gave um, a lot of my family members last year and friends um, with Jonathan Spider. Someone in our group that was from another country, and I can't remember who it was, shared an idea with us, shared a story about the Christmas spider. Has anybody in here heard of that? Karina probably has. The Christmas spider. I had never heard of that until last year, uh, but they shared it with us and they asked me to do, to stitch out the tarantula in Christmas colors um, to go along with a story. So I stitched it out in Christmas colors and then shared in the group what colors I used and where. And it was a story about the legend of the Christmas spider. It's a story about a, um, a poor widow, hardworking poor widow that lived in a small hut with her children. I'm reading it on Wikipedia right now. Um, a, in the summer, a pine cone fell on the earthen floor of the hut and took root and grew. And the widow's children were excited about the tree because they could have a Christmas tree by winter. The tree grew, but when Christmas arrived, 
they could not afford to decorate the tree. Uh, the children were sad and went to bed. And during the night, they woke up and saw that the tree was covered with spider webs that a spider had um, put webs all over the tree at night. But when they opened the windows in the morning and the sunlight hit the tree, all of the webs turned into gold and silver and the children were happy. And supposedly that is the story of how tinsel came about, uh, that we put tinsel on the tree. So you see my tree back there. I'll put a little bit of tinsel on it, but I think I need to add some more <laughs> tinsel on those trees. And in my Facebook group, I actually printed out the story of the spider, two different versions here. Um, one has um, Jesus in the story, the Christ child, and the other one does not. But I, I put them both as PDFs in my group so that you could print them out and stitch out these spiders and give someone a really unusual Christmas gift. They're not going to get this from anybody else, right? So just some fun gift ideas I wanted to share with you guys. Um, remind y'all about my code. All Brands 20 gets you 20% off anything that is not already marked down on my website all the way into the end of the year. So help you out with um, things like that. It would be a cute ornament. You can't see that. Barbara, but I actually have a spider all the way on the top of my tree up there. I have this little red spider and it's dark back there, so you can't see. But um, once I turn on all the lights, you'll be able to see that. So I have the spider in the tree. I think my sister told me the other day she put her spider back in her tree, too. So um, does anybody want to type up hashtag all brands really quick again so that they can uh, we can pull a name and see who won? I hope you guys enjoyed what we stitched today and maybe you got some new ideas for um christmas gifts wasn't that a great story i love that story and see i have so many people from different countries in my group that spider that jonathan's uh came up with last year we have a lot of men and guys who have joined our Facebook group. And what makes me really happy is they're stitching on their wives embroidery machine now. It brought a whole lot of guys into our group and they're happy and excited <laughs> that they have something that they like to stitch on the embroidery machines. And, and that's been a lot of fun. And they've done all kinds of things with that spider. All right. So whenever you're ready to go ahead and do the name, let's see who won. So lots of people typing that up. So somebody, let's see. Winner, Pamela Mitchell. Congratulations. You won a $25 gift certificate to all brands. So if you can just email them with your name and number to that email address down there, I think it's going to spread across the bottom again. Um, let me see. Events at allbrands.com. Just send them a quick email and they'll get back to you and let you know how you can redeem that. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and allowing me to take over the All Brand Show. I had a lot of fun. It was great to see you all and I hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. Okay.